LLMs, transformers, attention. Three years ago, these words meant nothing. Now, they're everywhere. But beneath the buzzwords, a neural network is just a pattern recognizer. Feed it enough examples, and it learns to turn bad guesses into confident predictions. Well, what is it good for? It can take in a picture of a cat, stare at it for a second, do its own magic, and then confidently guess that the picture is actually of a cat. Show it a digit, even one scribbled by a toddler, and it still manages to nail it surprisingly well and many times more accurately than humans. It can also suggest the most natural completion of a phrase in any language. This language capability brought neural networks to the forefront in 2022, with the release of the large language model ChatGPT 3.5. And if you haven't heard of large language models, it's time to lift that rock you've been living under. Next word prediction is trickier than it sounds. It's not just about the last word. LLMs devour massive amounts of text to generate something coherent. What do they do with all that data? That's what we'll explore in this video. We're going to make a few assumptions here, not because we're lazy, though that's certainly part of it, but because explaining all the details would get you hopelessly lost in the weeds. If for some reason you enjoy weeds, we've got other videos on the way just for you, each weeding into one of the specific topics. In a sense, the network consists of a few hidden layers, in our case we chose two, other than the input layer, which has the words you see on the left, and the output layer, which is really nothing more than all the words in the English language. The goal is to take the input words, leave the gun, take the, and ask the network to give you its best guess of what the next word could be. For every word in the English language, it computes that word's probability of being the next word in the sentence and picks the most likely one. The first assumption we will make is that the words have some numerical value that we can use for the computation. In reality, every word has a set of numbers assigned to it, called a vector, but for our discussion and for simplicity, assume every word is assigned one number. The network uses some math to compute the values of the nodes in layer 1, then uses these values to compute the values of the nodes in layer 2, and uses all values in layer 2 to compute the values in the last layer. And in that last layer, we hope that somehow cannoli will be the word with the highest probability. Before you train your network, it really produces pure garbage. Obviously, shoes is not an acceptable output, while cannoli is. The goal is to make the network refuse shoes and all the other words and accept cannoli. Let's start from the beginning. Every node in the input layer has a numerical value which reflects the value of the input word. Leave will have a value, the will have a value, gun will have a value, and so on. These values, called embeddings, are just pre-assigned numbers for each word. We won't cover how they're created. For now, assume the model comes with them built in. So, populating the input layer is just looking up each word's value. These little circles in the layers are called neurons, with the idea that this is emulating the brain function. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Each neuron in the first hidden layer takes all the input word values and computes a weighted sum, where each weight reflects how strongly that neuron is connected to a specific input. It then adds a small built-in offset called a bias, which shifts the activation point and helps the neuron learn more complex patterns. Because the raw sum can grow very large, we pass it through a sigmoid activation function, which squashes the result into a range between 0 and 1, and, more importantly, introduces non-linearity, allowing the network to learn patterns far more complex than simple straight lines. We repeat this process for every neuron in the first layer, then again in the second, and finally, the output layer assigns a probability to each possible word out of the dictionary. Yes, a number is computed for every single word. We then choose the word with the highest score and trust it to be right. 
Before training the network, the model will pick a random word from the dictionary with almost no chance of getting a good word that actually makes sense. That's why it needs training. Basically, we need to tweak these parameters inside the network until relevant words start appearing when sentences are input to the model. These W's and B's you see in these formulas are really the levers that we can change to make the network produce the outputs we desire. So how does this tweaking actually work? We know the probability of the word cannoli should be high. That probability depends on all the weights in the final layer, things like W211, W221, W231, and so on. To raise that probability, those weights need to adjust upward. But that's not all. The activations feeding into this layer, values like A21 through A212, also need to increase. And those activations depend on the weights and activations in the previous layer. And those, in turn, depend on the weights connected to the original input layer. If you trace the cannoli output all the way back, you'll see it ultimately depends on just two things, the original input values and the model's internal parameters, the weights W and biases B. The activations A you see in the middle are just intermediate values that the network calculates on its way to the final result. Simply, we want A31, the activation corresponding to cannoli, to be the highest for this training example. Since the input values are fixed, they come from the data, the only things we can adjust are the model's weights and biases. But here's the catch. Changing those parameters to boost Cannoli's score will also affect the scores of the other words. And the updates those other words want might interfere with Cannoli's probability. Training is really about finding the right balance, adjusting the weights just enough so that the correct output increases while still accounting for how those same parameters influence all the other possible outputs. It might sound like an impossible task, but the math behind it makes it manageable. The trick is to look at the problem from another angle. Instead of thinking about all the weights at once, focus on one single weight, say W135. Each word in the output layer exerts some influence on how this weight should change based on how much it affects that word's error. The training algorithm gathers all those signals and combines them, roughly like taking an average, to decide how W135 should be adjusted. In a sense, we're finding the optimal value of W315, the one that balances influence across all output words, not just cannoli. Let's look at this more closely. For every training example, meaning every time the network tries to guess the next word, you need to calculate how each possible output word influences a weight like W135. All of these influences happen at the same time, so the network can't just listen to one word's request without considering the rest. Instead, it effectively computes an average of those influences so that no single word's push is completely undone by another's pull. That's just for one training example. In that example, you might be trying to make words like cannoli, eclair, or donut more likely while reducing the probability of words like basket, high, or true. The network combines the impact of all those words on W135 into one averaged adjustment. It's like merging hundreds of tiny suggestions into one refined change. But training doesn't stop there. It repeats this process across an enormous number of examples, often trillions. Just as the network averages the effects of all possible outputs in a single training step, it also averages those effects over all training examples. If it didn't, one training example might push W135 in one direction, only for the next to yank it back in the other direction. By aggregating these influences, the weight gradually settles into a value that works well across the entire dataset, not just for one word or one sentence, but for language as a whole. Here's the big takeaway of this video. A neural network is basically a mountain of adjustable parameters. 
By tweaking them step by step during training, it transforms from guessing wildly to generating shockingly good results. Training works like this. Take a chunk of text and hide the next word. The network predicts what it thinks comes next. Then you reveal the real word and adjust the network's parameters so that next time it's more likely to predict that word correctly. If you had presented this idea to an academic before it was ever tried, they'd probably have laughed in your face. There's almost no deterministic theory guaranteeing it would work. It's like throwing darts blindfolded and hoping to hit the bullseye. Except after each throw, someone gives you feedback and helps you adjust your aim. The fact remains though, you are blindfolded. <laughs>